How y'all doing? Welcome back. Donald here again, and today I'm going to build upon the stuff I told you about with type assertions, and we're going to look at a, a different way to use type assertions called type switches. And how exactly am I going to show you how to do things with type switches? With Pokemon. So you see I have a program here. I have some code already set up. And you'll see I have a bunch of structs that I've already declared um, representing all the different uh, types that exist in Pokemon. Uh, if you're not familiar with Pokemon, it's basically a game where you you catch these creatures and the creatures have different um, different stats and different type attributes. And the type attributes can be things like whether it's, is it a grass, is it a fire type, is it a water? And they also have moves. And the moves also have these same types. When you use certain types of moves, against certain types of Pokemon, they either do more or less damage. So what we're going to use is use type assertions or specifically later type switches to determine how effective those moves are against those other types of Pokemon. So if we go down to uh, the bottom here, whoops, you'll see I have my main function and my Pokemon is a grass because I always pick the grass starter whenever I played. And because I picked the grass, of course, the rival always picks fire because he's a jackass. And then the first gym leader in um, the original Pokemon games uh, was basically all his Pokemon were rock and ground. And uh, so you'll see here that I have a, a slice of interface, I meaning it can be whatever, of rock and ground. Uh, because Pokemon, uh, a lot of them have one type, but some of them can have two types. Hell, maybe in some of the newer games they have more than that. Uh, back in my day, Pokemon only had more, only had two types, man. Uh, so we want to have a uh, a method on our grass type that we can call passing in the other type to say, okay, how effective is this move going to be against this opposing Pokemon? Okay, uh, so I'm going to go up to uh, the grass type. And I'm going to implement a method here that's going to return a float that represents our damage modifier. All right, so I'll be right back. So we have the start of the method here. It's called modifier. It takes in a variadic number of arguments, remember, because like the, the Pokemon can have more than one type, and it's going to return the modifier. Now, initially, the modifier is just one, meaning the attack is not weaker or stronger against the opposing Pokemon. And it's just going to return the modifier after we do some checks. So I'm going to implement the first check and I will be right back. So you see here I have the first check implemented, uh, which is against that fire type. Now, if you can recall or know anything about the type matchups in Pokemon, fire or uh, grass type attacks are not very good against fire Pokemon. So in our case, we are going to cut the modifier in half, right? So our modifier is going to go from one being neutral to 0.5, meaning it only does like half damage. Huh, but there's we have some other types we need to check. So let's let's uh, implement one more of these and I'll be right back. Okay, now I had the second check implemented. You will see here on a rock type, grass type moves or, or do very well against rock type Pokemon. So in this case, we're going to apply a times two modifier to it. Uh, so in this case, if there had been no changes, our modifier would go from one to two, meaning it's going to do twice the damage. Okay, so we have two type checks in so far. Uh, how many more do I have to do? Oh, sweet God. So just using normal type assertions, th this is going to get very verbose, right? This is going to get a little out of hand. So if only there was a, a more convenient way to use t a type assertion approach, but checking for multiple types, hmm. Oh, could maybe we could use type switches. Hmm, yeah, there we go. So what exactly is a type switch? Uh, type switch, if the name sort of gives it away, is, is, is kind of like this interesting combination that only happens specifically with a switch type conditional, meaning, you know, switch is basically like a kind of like a, another fancy way of writing like a, a bunch of if statements put together and a type assertion. And it's done using a uh, slight variation of the type assertion syntax. And I will show you that in one second. So you see now I've refactored what we had using a type switch. And this, this is much easier to read and also is, you know, it takes up way less space. You'll see here is our type assertion, but 
the slight difference is, is that in, in the parentheses, rather than specifying a specific type that we're asserting for, you literally just use the keyword type. And it's basically saying within the context of a switch statement, okay, I'm going, I want you to give me the type of this variable and I'm going to basically check it against a bunch of different situations. And uh, the, again, this is sort of like the um, the two value return type assertion syntax as in this is not going to return, this is not going to panic if like none of these match, if none of these match, it just doesn't do anything. Now, this looks fine, uh, but you'll notice that, you know, as we go through all these types, you know, again, we're going to have a bunch of lines, uh, but in the case of a switch statement, you, uh, if you've used switch statements before, you can recall that if you have multiple cases that all lead to the same outcome, you can just put them all in one line like this. So in the case of um, rock, there's another type that's also weak against grass that we could put here, which is which we're about to run into, which is uh, ground. Ground also is weak against grass. So we can put everything that grass is not good against in one case here so it'd be like fire flying i think bug my my uh memory of like the t the type matchups in pokemon is probably a little rusty because good god when's the last time i actually played pokemon and then all the moves that are uh weak against grass we could all put on one line here so instead of having this god awful list of like god how many can pokemon types there are uh lines checking like if okay blah 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 we have this much much cleaner much easier to read um logic that is basically just kind of summarizing all these different type checks that we're doing so fully implemented with all of the type checks this is more what it looks like these are all the types that uh don't that aren't affected that much by grass so therefore half damage and in the case of these three they take double damage now you may be asking well what about the rest of them well, nothing changes. Uh, in the case of any of these other types that aren't mentioned, uh, they don't they don't increase or decrease the modifier. Therefore, there's no real reason to actually do a check uh, for them. So we have our method implemented. Let's actually go down and use it now and see if it actually works the way we think it should. So you see now here, I have um, decided to store the modifier return from our method in this variable called mod, and I'm initially passing in our variable. Now, if you recall, as you see here, our arrival is a fire type. So if our logic works right, the modifier we should get back from this is 0.5, meaning this attack will do half damage against the rival's Pokemon. So let's run this now and see what we get. And you will see what, well, I had the wrong pronoun. Uh, my Pokemon has a 0.5% modifier against blank. There we go. It helps if I actually use the right verbs. You can actually see what the actual types are of the things in the string. You will see that my grass Pokemon has a, or I should say, I should say move, but you get the idea. My grass Pokemon is probably going to do half damage against the fire because usually the Pokemon, like if it's a grass type, it usually it has at least like a grass move, especially at lower levels. That's generally all they have is like a crap move and then like a, a low level move of their same type you, you get the idea so now let's uh imp let's let's do the same thing again but instead of passing in the rival we're gonna pass in uh brock and you're gonna see how fucking screwed he is okay now that we have the uh the call set up to get the modifier against the uh, against brock uh let's run it and see how boned he is it would help if i actually used the spread operator on this to do it right wouldn't it Let's try that again, shall we? Again, how screwed is Brock? Ah, yes, there we go. Let's see. My move against him is going to do times four damage. So unless he has a huge level advantage on me, or the move that I'm using is weak is, is extremely weak, uh, he's screwed. So there you go. This that this is a type switch. Uh type switch is essentially a way to do multiple type assertions. Um, without having to constantly repeat that, that that whole loop of check one thing, is it okay? Check one thing, is it okay? Here you can just blah, just, just check as many things as, as you want. Um, that That's all I got for you today. I just figured, I, I actually tried really hard to make this like, how can I incorporate some of this nerdy crap I, I used to and still am kind of used to, but also do it with teaching. And I was like, hey, 
Type assertions, gotta check types. You gotta check types when you're doing Pokemon moves. <laughs> that was my wife's idea, by the way. She's a fucking genius. Uh, if you like the video, if you like me rambling about how much better old Pokemon were, by, uh, be sure to like, subscribe, share the video. And with that, y'all come on back now and I'll see you next time.